So what it would do is the first 12 months of the loan, you would get a rate of 5%. The second year, you would get 6%. And then for the life of the loan, it's 7%. It's all amortized over 30 years, just like a regular fixed rate loan. But it allows you to maybe get into the payment a little bit and not necessarily start with the highest payment, but maybe gradually get into it. Or let's say you're planning on where your job, you know you'll be making more commission, you'll be making more income in the next few years. So you'd rather a lower payment that first year. It allows you to do that. A seller can pay the buy down cost. But I did on this calculation as I showed you. So at 5%, the principal and interest is 21.47.29. Now I did this on a $500,000 house, putting 20% down, okay? The difference in the monthly payment from the first year to the third year is $513.92. Don't you think a buyer would like to know if they can pay that much less the first year and maybe build into this house as opposed to going straight up to the higher payment? The next year when it goes to 6%, the payment difference is 263.01. So again, for 12 months, you're gonna be paying that much less. So what you're essentially doing is paying the difference between the payments and what the final payment is, and you're paying that up front. So in this example, the 2-1 buy-down, the cost to whoever's paying it, whether it be the buyer or the seller, is $9,323. But you look, if you have a seller that has a house listing and they say, hey, I'll buy a buy-down, think about it this way. You're saving this to the buyer and the buyer may go, hey, this is worth it to do this. So that's, that's kind of how a two one buy down works. So then I said, you know, I keep on hearing the word buy down so much right now. And so we want to understand that there's a difference between a, a temporary buy down and you're buying down your rate. Okay. Because you can also buy down your rate for the life of the loan, which is just discount points, just like we've always had. It's the same thing that's been around forever. But what you have to think about is what's going to better help the customer. So what I suggested to somebody is when, before you do a temporary buy down, Look and see what's going to happen if you buy the right down for the life loan and how much that costs you. How long you're planning on staying in the house and which works out best for your plans. Because I may choose something different. If I'm only going to be there for three to five years, I may choose to do this. If I'm going to be there 30, I may want to buy the rate down to 6% and it may cost the same amount of money. So I'd rather put the money towards buying it for the life of the loan as opposed to a temporary. So it's really about educating and making sure that you're working with a lender that's going to take the time to break out these numbers and let the buyer make the decision that's best for them and their family. Okay, so that's the difference between the two of those. And that's a big plus right now. Um, going into listings and things like that, it's a big plus for to get sellers to understand that the buyers, you know, they're a little bit afraid of these rates and things. So maybe we need to get the sellers to pay a little bit more closing cost and to help out a little bit now so that the buyers aren't feeling all of this on their own because the market has changed. And I, I listen to a lot of realtors out there and they're all like, oh my gosh, my house is actually sitting for two days and it's not sold yet. And it's just a matter of also educating our sellers how the market's changing, but also knowing these ideas to give to our sellers and our buyers. You do need to qualify for the, the higher interest rate. And, you know, in this example, I love this. This is awesome. But like, let's just say like right now, in the market that we're in, right? You know, you get a seller to agree to pay this because you're hopeful that the interest rate is going to come down, right? In a, in a few years. So is it, I'm assuming it's possible that I could refinance before I ever even hit the highest interest rate. Absolutely. It's, there's no prepayment penalty or anything like that on the loans nowadays. Um, it's just like any other loan. It's just the buy, the rate has bought down temporarily. So you can refinance once the rates do get better. Everything I'm hearing is they think in a, they don't know how long. <laughs> At first they were saying by the end of the year, now they're saying maybe next year or the year after. But as the rates do go down, it, it, they can refinance. So it's a great way too, if they think the market's gonna get better in the next three years to get, you know, to go on and refinance this out before it does go to the full interest rate. But thank you, Derek, so much for pointing out because I did put that on there. They do have to qualify for the highest rate. 